Good happy Tuesday morning, February 2nd, 2021. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all are having a wonderful Tuesday morning. Happy Groundhog's Day, everyone, and also we have snow, a snowy day today. Let's go to um, meteorologist Kevin Scrippa where he has a full weather forecast for you to tell you about the February Nor'easter and that is going to begin moving out today. Welcome to the Riley King Newscast and also we have a lot of news to get to so let's begin. First, let's begin with the weather with meteorologist Kevin Skruba right now. Take your workout back at Planet Fitness in our clean and spacious clubs and use our crowd meter to pick the best time to visit. Join now for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Deal ends February 11th. Heavy snow and gusty winds overnight. Winter storm warning remains in effect for a portion of the day today. We are looking at the heaviest of the snow left over now for the northern half of the state. While for southern areas, it looks like some areas of lighter snow and could even go down to a little bit of patchy freezing drizzle with a small additional accumulation. We're looking at the winds continuing to kick up over 30 to 35 miles an hour this morning. That will turn to a northerly wind that will gust at times over 25 miles an hour into the afternoon as temperatures hover around in the upper 20s to lower 30s. Occasional light snow or snow showers for southern parts of the state, while the steadier snow will continue up through the White Mountains and the Great North Woods. Uh, several additional inches of snow there. And then from there, it does look like we'll see occasional light snow for the southern half of the state during the evening and overnight hours tonight. And we may have a passing snow shower tomorrow, but more of the more focused activity will likely be up north as the swirl of an area of low pressure slowly fades away. Temperatures will be near the freezing mark with that wind still noticeable out of the north and northwest tomorrow. Partial sunshine Thursday. Looks like the next system could be some light snow or mixing with a little bit of light rain closer to the shoreline on Friday afternoon and then partly sunny skies for Saturday as it stands. Winds still gusty early this morning, over 30 to 35 miles an hour. That will turn to just a brisk wind this afternoon out of a northerly direction and then tomorrow out of a northwesterly direction before subsiding with partial sunshine Thursday. Lighter snow continues to fall and could be several additional inches through the White Mountains of the Great North Woods and a small additional accumulation elsewhere. Look for the potential of some patchy freezing drizzle in southern areas of the state later this morning. Then we fade into the 20s tonight. Much quieter day for us tomorrow, but still that noticeable northwesterly wind. As far as additional snowfall at this point, White Mountains, Great North Woods stand to see the most, while the farther south you go, a light coating to maybe an inch or two, just depending on exactly where these lighter snow showers set up, but not everyone's going to see those as we go through the day today and into this evening. As far as your seven-day forecast is concerned, beyond Groundhog Day today, partial sunshine Thursday, and then mixed shower activity for Friday. Okay, and there you go on that weather video from meteorologist Kevin Scarippa. Thank you for that weather forecast, Kevin. And now let's take a look at your morning traffic watch and see how the roadways look like for this Tuesday morning. edition of your morning traffic watch. Let's begin and take a look at your morning traffic map this Tuesday morning. And here's a look at that morning traffic map for all of you for this Tuesday morning. In Hanukkah, you're seeing some medium paced traffic, Hopkinton medium and slow paced traffic. Then we got a traffic issue here. Delays of eight minutes and delays easing on I-89 southbound 
between I-89 and Exit 3 Stickney Hill Road. Average speed 25 miles per hour. And you got delays of 9 minutes and delays increasing on I-89 southbound in Bow Junction. Average speed is 25 miles per hour. Bow Pembroke Concord slow and medium pace traffic. Bosquin and Canterbury slow and medium pace traffic. Then Chichester slow, medium, and smooth traffic here. Epsom medium pace traffic with a little bit of smooth traffic. Northwood medium pace traffic with a little bit of fast traffic. Lee medium pace traffic with some fast and slow traffic. Durham medium pace traffic with some fast traffic. Rochester medium and slow pace traffic with traffic issues. Delays of three minutes and delays easing on Route 16 northbound between US 202 Spalding Turnpike and New Hampshire 16. Average speed is 20 miles per hour. And also delays of two minutes on Route 16 northbound in Rochester. Average speed is 20 miles per hour. Summersworth medium and slow pace traffic. Dover medium and slow pace traffic. Portsmouth medium and slow pace traffic in Maine as well, medium and slow pace traffic. Then you got major incident here, slow traffic here with um, in Rye, and you got delays of one minute on I-95 Blue Star Memorial Highway southbound in Cemetery Corners. And delays of three minutes on I-95 Blue Star Memorial Highway southbound between I-95 Blue Star Memorial Highway and exit to New Hampshire 101 Exeter in Hampton Express Way. Average speed is 30 miles per hour. Very slow Rye, Northampton, Hampton, Seaburg into the border, Massachusetts. Slow and medium pace traffic, slow going here. 101, very slow going, medium and slow pace traffic as you can see, slow going on 101. Manchester, New York City area, medium pace traffic with some slow traffic, and around Manchester Airport, slow going traffic as well. We got delays of two minutes on I-93 northbound between I-293 and exit. 8 Wellington Road. Average speed is 25 miles per hour. Around Bedford, you got slow and medium pace traffic with some fast traffic. Amherst, slow and medium pace traffic with a little bit of fast traffic as well. And Bedford as well, some slow and medium pace fast traffic. Manchester, Merrimack, Nashua, into the border, Massachusetts, medium pace traffic with some slow traffic. Manchester, Derry, Windham, Salem, into the border, Massachusetts, medium pace traffic, with a little spot of a slow traffic. And that is a look at your morning traffic map this morning. And now let's take a look at your morning traffic camp. And here's a live look at your morning traffic cam this morning. And this is a traffic camp of the Rotary slash Roundabout in Derry, New Hampshire, as you can see it. There as well, snow covered roadways, as you can see as well. But if you don't need to be on those roadways, stay home where it is better off of being until this storm is over with. And that is it for this Tuesday morning edition of your morning traffic watch. Thank you for watching and have a great day, everyone. Goodbye. Okay, and there you go. That is a look at traffic this morning. And now let's get to your news. First up, let's begin with COVID-19 updates. Two more Granite Staters die of COVID-19 as hospitalizations dip below 200. Number of cases continue to decline in New Hampshire. 
Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. February 11th, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. With all this variety, you can move it in our clean and spacious clubs. America, your fitness is essential. Join today for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Hurry, deal ends February 11th. An update on the coronavirus outbreak in New Hampshire. 364 more tests coming back positive today. 4,600 people are actively battling the virus tonight. DHHS says uh, two new COVID-related deaths were announced. One was linked to a long-term care facility. There is some good news to report tonight. Hospitalizations are under 200 for the first time since December 6th. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. COVID-19 in New Hampshire, what you need to know, let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 600-058 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 26,296,906 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 1,059 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 193 current number of hospitalizations for COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 442,962 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. In Nashua, 388. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Nashua, 5,823. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire and the purple daily new positive COVID-19 cases. Orange, new hospitalization, and red deaths. Now let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple, total current COVID-19 cases, orange, current hospitalization. And let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases, orange, total hospitalization, red deaths, and blue recovered. Let's take a look at this chart here. Positive PCR test rate, positive PCR and antigen test rate, and daily PCR tests. Let's take a look at this chart here, age group of cases, and female and male of cases. And let's take a look at this chart here, infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here, deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race, slash, ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And never mind any common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spits? And prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Fire causes major damage to Jefferson Town Hall, reported to be under control. No injuries reported. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Gunstock Mont Resort, we are excited to share a healthy and fun 2021 season with you. Know before you go and visit gunstock.com to buy tickets and for the latest info. We can't wait to create memories with you and yours all winter long. And we do begin tonight with that breaking news of fire that ripped through Jefferson Town Hall is now under control. Take a look at that picture from earlier tonight. Crews from multiple towns responded to help fight that blaze. And the fire chief telling News 9 the fire station next door has sustained exterior heat damage, but flames thankfully did not spread into the firehouse. So the first 911 calls came in just after 7 o'clock tonight. Fire officials say at this hour, the town hall portion of the building is a complete loss. 
and the town office portion is heavily damaged, but still standing. You can see in this photo what's left of the building. The cause is under investigation tonight. Selectman Kevin Meehan telling News 9 the wind and cold have made the situation very difficult for crews out there. We also spoke with the chairman of the select board who is calling this an unbelievable loss for the town. It's really, uh, uh, it's really, uh, it's not just a lot, but you worry about the folks out there trying to fight this. Um, the winds up here right now are in the mid 30s, and it's almost nonstop at that. And you just think of a fire tonight with that type of wind and trying to fight it, and, uh, and you just hope that everybody is okay and nobody gets hurt out of this. And thankfully, so far, we have not received any reports of injuries. Of course, we are going to continue to follow this and bring you any updates as soon as we get them. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Eleven thousand people in Phase One B to receive extra help scheduling first vaccine appointments officials reaching out to those identified let's take a listen to that video from wmur news 9. now through february 11th join planet fitness for no enrollment with all this variety you can move it in our clean and spacious clubs america your fitness is essential join today for no enrollment ten dollars a month no commitment Hurry, deal ends February 11th. Time, thousands of people eligible in Phase 1B are still struggling to book that first appointment. The state says out of 300,000 people who registered, 11,000 still need help with scheduling. The state says they have a list and are reaching out, including people identified as vulnerable from doctors' offices and hospitals and those without email. The state will try to move up appointments as more doses arrive. We promise that we would try to move people up. We'd try to fix the problems. We'd try to get them vaccinated. And we're, we're doing that as fast as we can based on the doses that we get. So this weekend, extra doses led to an impromptu clinic that allowed more than 1,900 people to get their first shot. The state says more staff and possible changes to the federal website should improve the process in the future. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Coastal crews prepare for high winds, tides during the nor'easter. Officials monitor flood-prone roads and low-lying areas. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jennifer Crompton. February 11th, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. With all this variety, you can move it in our clean and spacious clubs. America, your fitness is essential. Join today for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Hurry, deal ends February 11th. That's not snow behind me. That's one of the many piles of salt along the seacoast here in Portsmouth. Trucks here all day long loading up to keep roads safe across the state. But here on the coast, it's that combination of nor'easter and high tide that's always an added concern. The tide was high about 2 this afternoon and will be again just after 2 Tuesday morning, and that could pose some problems. Low-lying streets and neighborhoods near the marsh in Hampton are flood-prone, and directly along the shoreline, erosion is a concern. The retaining walls of loose rocks, especially in Northampton and Rye, are already eroded from the winter, and there is concern about some flooding that could happen. So they are weaker right now? And with a storm of any significance, we'll start to see some of the local areas where they do flood. So again, we're asking people if the road is flooded, not to drive through it because it's misleading on how deep it really could be. We might get that splash over from the ocean. Um, we'll take the appropriate steps to shut down roadways uh, should they become hazard. Another concern along the coast is that people often like to come over and see what nature in action looks like. And the advice, as usual, is please stay home and be safe and let crews do their jobs. In Portsmouth, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report.
drivers urge to be safe, stay home, if possible, until the storm is past. Snow falling fast, accumulating quickly. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cronin. Here at Gunstock Mount Resort, we are excited to share a healthy and fun 2021 season with you. Know before you go and visit gunstock.com to buy tickets and for the latest info. We can't wait to create memories with you and yours all winter long. Snow falling fast and accumulating in a hurry. February kicking off with a nor'easter that's gripping most of the state. After a fast start earlier this season, plow drivers thought they were in for a busy winter. But that all changed. January was kind of a dud. I think we probably got you know, five inches of snow total throughout the month and you know, warm weather in between. Keith Audette of TM&M Services is in charge of clearing about 50 businesses in the Hillsborough area. Some of the commercial properties we deal with are open till midnight. Others are open 24 hours, so we'll maintain them throughout the night. Storms that bring north of a foot of snow can be tricky to deal with, especially with the rate of snowfall like this one. Major highways are snow covered tonight, and even with more than 600 pieces of equipment on the roads, safety officials are urging people to stay home until it's over. Visibility will be poor. Our fleet will be out doing what they do, and so it's easier for them to get um, through their snow operations if there are less people on the road and everyone is safer at home. Meantime, Audette will be ready for whatever comes next. You really can't tell what's going to happen in February or March. Um, you know, we could have early spring or, or get, you know, get buried until mid-April. Oh, mid-April, I hope not. Uh, but hey, be careful, especially around those plow drivers. DOT telling us that in December they had two cases where drivers hit their plow trucks as they were trying to pass them. So give them space, give them room, and we'll all get through this. Reporting live in Salem, Mike Cronin, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Be safe, everyone. Superintendents decide between remote days or snow days aimed pandemic learning. Over 500 closings reported Monday night. Let's take a listen to that video from WMU War News 9, Sharice LeClaire. In a normal year, this definitely would have been a snow day. During a school year in which nothing has been normal, calling for a snow day gets a bit more complicated, too. There are people who, I really want my children in school. They haven't been in school uh, that much. And, you know, they're on the alternating day schedule, so days in school are very precious. Um, but then today, a little bit of uh, on Facebook uh, erupted, you know, can't we just have the traditional snow day? Can't kids be kids? Dr. Dean Cascadon is the superintendent in Bow and says making the right call is tough right now, but they're trying to give kids more classroom time. Typically, one group of students will attend class in person on Mondays and Tuesdays. Everyone has a flex working day on Wednesday, and then the other group comes in person for Thursday and Friday. This week, students who are supposed to be in school Tuesdays will go to school Wednesday instead. It's hard pleasing people at this time. It's been a challenge having them home for it's going on a year now, and um, it, it's been a challenge. Mother of four, Julie McFarland, says she thinks her kids are better off doing remote lessons so they can get out earlier in the summer. Something everyone seems to agree on, kids are eager for a return to normal life. Well, they're anxious to get back to school in person and just kind of see their friends. Yeah, a lot of families anxious to get the kids back to schools after uh, life can resume back to normal. Meantime, there are about 500 closings and delays on our website right now. Many schools posting whether tomorrow will indeed be a snow day or a remote day. You can also see those scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Live in Bedford tonight, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and 
that report. Dow features jump more than 200 points after Wall Street's strong start to the week. U.S. stock features rose early Tuesday morning after the equity market kicked off the week with a bounce back session. COVID relief plan. Some Republican senators claim they've made progress towards a relief package after negotiations with President Biden. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. This morning, possible progress in the battle to get economic relief to struggling Americans. We have just had a very productive, cordial two-hour meeting with the president and the vice president. Republican senators emerging from a meeting in the Oval Office where they and the Biden administration agreed to hold more negotiations on COVID relief. It was an excellent meeting and we're very appreciative that as his first official meeting in the Oval Office, uh, the president chose to spend so much time with us in a frank and very useful discussion. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki echoing Collins' description, calling it a substantive and productive discussion. And Republican Senator Bill Cassidy sounding even more upbeat. I consider it a success. There was common ground. As the president said, we're united in our concern for the American people. Both sides were calling for two different bills. Biden's proposal cost $1.9 trillion. The Republican plan, about one-third of that. And while the White House wants $1,400 direct payments to most Americans, Republicans want to limit the checks to $1,000 and send them only to lower-income Americans. But there is some common ground. Like Biden, Republicans want $160 billion for vaccines, testing, and help for small businesses. In the meantime, some positive signs in the fight against the virus. The number of people in the hospital has dropped by 10% or more in 38 states compared to last week, but less than 8% of the U.S. population has been vaccinated. At Dodger Stadium, one of the largest vaccination sites, they're averaging 8,000 shots per day, but say they could give out thousands more if they had the supply. It's painful to see that when you know that you can be getting those vaccinations in people's arms. Doctors are predicting another surge as more contagious variants of the virus take hold, now confirmed in 35 states. The White House is urging health care providers not to hold back second shots. There are no doses that are hanging around. A dose that's available is going to go into someone's arm. At nursing homes, the CDC found only 38% of workers accepted the vaccine when it was first offered. Even as vaccinations ramp up, health officials stress the need for testing. The White House is now spending more than $200 million on this at-home COVID test that's set to be about 95% accurate and can be used without a prescription. After taking the swab, users place the sample into a digital analyzer, which sends results to your phone in 15 minutes. I don't think we can call it a game changer because that $30 price point is still a little prohibitive for a lot of Americans. But still, it's a step in the right direction. And those tests are expected to be in short supply until later on this year. Now, as for that COVID relief bill, more talks are scheduled. However, if they fail, Democrats say they're willing and ready to pass Biden's plan without GOP support. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.